I'm Steve Kenson from Green Renine Publishing. You're watching Play Unplugged TV. here at playonplug.com and I'm here with Steve Kenson and Steve you really don't need an introduction besides being the <laughs> everybody's always so modest but besides being the creator of Mutants and Masterminds and doing all this really great work um, with role playing games you know you you've done um you've worked on D&D in the past yep. um, you have a really great gaming pedigree so tell me about what uh, Gen Con 2011 what should people be getting like really excited about coming down to visit you here at uh, at the Green Ronin booth well, the, the newest things we've got this year are, um, we've got the Heroes and Villains Volume 1 for DC Adventures, which is the first of two big character books. Um, it's uh, 300 plus pages of uh, tons and tons of DC characters. The first volume is uh, A through K, um, so it's uh, Abracadabra through Cobra, I think, uh, of the DC Universe. So it's, it's a huge number of characters all statted out for DC Adventures. Um, and we've got a uh, set two of uh, the Dragon Age RPG, mm -hmm. which uh, details uh, levels six through 10 um, for Dragon Age characters, introduces uh, class specializations and a whole bunch of new talents and spells, uh, monsters and specializations uh, to extend people's uh, Dragon Age games, take them to the next level. I mentioned this before, um, I actually, we just got done playing through a, a pretty heavy session of Dragon Age, and it really is dark fantasy. It's great, oh, it's yeah. cool, but yeah. it's, it's, it's definitely like, it's got some twists, and you're like, whoa, tough decisions, things like that. So, Mutants and Masterminds and, D and getting the DC Universe license, now, what's it like working with DC? Is it, is it tough because of the, the amount of creative control, because of the, what, the, what they need you to do for the, to use their characters uh, and use their license, or are they pretty free to let, let you guys make your own decisions? Actually, DC has been really great to work with. Um, they're um, obviously they have very, very specific guidelines uh, about how they want their their characters handled, but they're very upfront with things. Um, they're they're very clear at providing those guidelines and explaining how they need to be how not, how they need to have things done for their licensing department. Um, and they've been really great about getting us uh, information um, and what, whatever we need to, to get things done. The, the only difficult part, which really wasn't any fault of DCs, was that they, they went through a pretty substantial uh, reorganization uh, recently Absolutely. and um, uh, shifted a lot of the, the, the company to um, uh, DC Entertainment out on the West Coast. And so a lot of people who, who we were working with who were in licensing were, were in the process of, you know, of, well, I have to move to California. Um, so, you know, that, that, that definitely, uh, you know, was created some issues, but that was no fault of DC's licensing department by any means. So they've, they've been really great to work with. Now, Steve, comic book fans are, and, and I'm a comic book fan, so I don't have a problem saying this, sure. they're notoriously hard to please. Like, how do you make sure that you respect the canon of the, you know, what, what comes out with the comics and, and keep the comic book fans happy at the same time make a game that's kind of approachable to everybody it seems right. like it's got kind of the same problems that making maybe a comic book movie would have like mm -hmm. uh, people are going to be real sticklers for source um, respect to canon etc right. etc right well in some regards we we try and take an approach similar to uh, the way a lot of filmmakers do in the sense that we we really aimed for DC to, to do the most what we call the most iconic versions of the characters that we could, um, that really, really focused on their their core elements, and uh, because we had fairly limited space mm -hmm. to deal with even the big characters, we really, really tried to get the the writers who were who were, who were writing up these characters to really pare it down to the essential core elements, uh, and those are really timeless in a lot of ways, um, and are so essential to the characters that they've basically been unchanged in many cases for 70 years yeah, absolutely. Um, so when we when we focus it that way um, I think we come up with characters that are very easy to adapt to whatever particular version or vision you have of that character and everybody has their favorite story or their favorite era of a particular character um, and you know we, we certainly want to leave the game open for inter that level of interpretation um, so that's why we tried to, to, to try and focus as much as we could on the sort of core essentials and let people fill in the details, uh, you know, as they saw fit. 
Absolutely. Now, um, as far as things like supplementary materials, if you were to, if you were going to do some adventures, say for uh, like some 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 pre-made adventures for DC Universe, would you tend to go towards creating your own stories, remaking maybe stories that are that have already taken place in the comics? What would be your where, how would you approach that? Well, if we were if we were going to write a specific adventure for DC, I think we would probably try and provide some new material if we could. Uh, we're going to be looking a lot in the DC Universe book at um, how to handle a lot of the existing events in the history of the DC Universe and DC Comics as um, you know, as events in a, in a game context, mm -hmm. uh, if if um, game masters are inclined to you know replay them in their own fashion, um, but honestly, I don't think that most uh, fans of of the comics uh, are really going to need our help as far as as replaying you know whatever major event they they might want to play around with. If they if they want to do um, you know fifty two or Infinite Crisis or something like that, you know, in their own fashion, in their own game, chances are good they've already got a pretty solid vision of, of what they want to do with it. Uh, and they probably don't need our help to, to figure that out. Okay.